This video is about the five enzymes used in DNA replication. The first enzyme is called helicase, and its job is to unzip the DNA. So let's just pretend that these two red lines is the DNA double helix. What happens is helicase latches on to the DNA strand and helicase starts moving down the DNA strand and as it does it causes the DNA strand to unzip like this. So helicase would end up here moving in this direction. Now remember from the previous video the DNA gets unzipped at multiple locations so it might look something like this in terms of a model so what we would find is that there would be multiple helicase molecules, one located there going in this direction, one located there going in that direction, one located there and going in that direction. Probably you would really have thousands of helicase molecules per chromosome. The second enzyme is called RNA polymerase. And to explain this, we are going to magnify one of these unzipped sections of our DNA. So here is the unzipped part. The heliocase molecule is traveling in this direction. RNA polymerase would lock on here and then follow the helicase. So let's just advance it to this place right here. So here's our RNA polymerase right there. And what this enzyme does is add a section of RNA letters, R N A letters. This is called a primer. RNA letters can be added directly to the DNA strand. So the RNA primer is usually about, say, 10 uh, nitrogen base letters long. A little, a little technical note to the honors students. Since the polymerase is chasing the helicase in that same direction, this strand of DNA becomes known as the leading strand, L-E, leading strand. Still technical, there's an RNA polymerase enzyme on the other strand going in the opposite direction. That means this is called the lagging strand, and this is very complicated to describe. I'll show you in class how it works. But just let it suffice that RNA letters would be added to the lagging strand like that. The next enzyme to come into play is called DNA polymerase 3. So let's recreate a portion of the DNA helix that's been unzipped like this. We have our helicase still traveling in this direction. We have our primer that's made of about 10 nitrogen bases happening on the leading strand and on the lagging strand. So DNA polymerase 3 locks on here and it also travels in the same direction as the helicase. So we'll put DNA polymerase enzyme right there, going that direction. And its job is to add letters of DNA. So this is our DNA letters, and they are complementary
In other words, if there was a G up here, there would be a C here. And if there was a T up here, there would be an A down here. So this is the enzyme that can add new letters at the rate of 500 to 1,000 base pairs per second. So let's redraw that double helix in an expanded form. I'll shrink the scale a little bit down. So here's a long section that's been unzipped by our good old friend helicase still traveling in that direction. Way back here somewhere we had our short piece of RNA called the primer and there would have been one down here as well. And at least on the top strand the picture is pretty clear. We would have a long strand of DNA being added in this direction by DNA polymerase 3. As I said it's much more complicated on the lagging strand and so we could only add that much DNA before we get to this place that's not unzipped. Okay now we can talk about our fourth enzyme called DNA polymerase 1. I think the reason they call it poly 1 is because this enzyme was discovered before DNA polymerase 3. So to explain this, I'm going to draw a close-up view of this part right here. Okay, here's my close-up view. So the role of DNA polymerase 1 is to come back over and basically swap out this little short piece of RNA and turn it into DNA. So we need the deoxyribose sugar and no uracil. Of course, this would be happening down here, too, on the bottom strand. This would get swapped out and turned into DNA. The fifth and final enzyme is called ligase. And the ligase is kind of like um, glue. So I'm just going to write the word glue here. Because the role of the ligase is to seal the joint that you see. It's like a gap between the end of this DNA and the beginning of that DNA. So this enzyme ligase locks onto the DNA strand and it seals that joint so it's continuous. So after what's probably a relatively short length of time, maybe an hour, happens during synthesis phase, we have successfully copied our DNA and where we had one double helix in the beginning we now have two double helixes and the ligase has gone along and it sealed all the joints on each one of these new strands. This method in which one of the strands remains old is called semi-conservative replication. Semi-conservative in that one is old, but yet one is new. Uh, remember this idea when we talk about the Messelson and Stahl experiment. Alright, that's it.